Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our second webinar. We had to um, make a correction, and, it, and it's my I take full responsibility for the problem that we had, and it has to do with the, the people who are members of the um, of the SIM team, SIM develop, development team. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our, quickly I'll introduce, and then we'll turn it over to our uh, presenters. Uh, Tamara McMillan, who is an EPC consultant with FUMTA2. DeAndrea Chapman, who is a uh, EPC um, with FUMTA3. And then Jacqueline Stewart, who is also a uh, FUMTA consultant for FUMTA2. With that, I'll turn it over to Tammy. To Jackie. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll turn it over to Jackie. Go Thank ahead, Jackie. You. Thank you, Donna. Mm -hmm. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us again. Or if this is the first time you're seeing the presentation, thank you for um, making it in today. We appreciate your time. This is our SIM team development training for targeted monitoring LEAs. And as Donna mentioned, I am joined by my colleagues, Tammy McMillan and DeAndrea Chapman, who will be facilitating this session today. We are also joined by our administrators, Donna Martini and uh, James Johnson. So thank you. One, um, one item I would like to bring to your attention right away is that we do not have the ASL interpreters with us today. So if you would like, um, closed captioning is available at the bottom of the screen on the more button, or not on the more button, but you can um, turn on the closed captioning to have that accessibility. All right, so let's go ahead and get started for today and go over the team development. Did you want to, are we sharing about the Q&A? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no worries, sorry. no worries. <laughs> okay, so just a few reminders before we get started. This webinar is recorded, and this recording will be available as soon as possible on the targeted monitoring padlet, which is called Resources for Targeted Monitoring. We will also, uh, actually the slides have already been posted on that padlet, so you can you can access them right away. And if you previously um, attended the team development training, we have sent you the updated presentation slides. So you do have those corrected slides, which match this presentation. If you have any questions at any time, please use the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. It will uh, post your questions so the panelists can see it. And we will be answering those questions as we move along and have some time at the end to answer your questions. All participants are muted. We cannot unmute you. We apologize for that. It just helps to keep things organized so that we can answer everybody's questions. And the chat is also disabled to make that question review easier. All right, so what are we doing today? Well, we will take a look at the timeline, where we are now and where we are heading. We will provide some team development resource links for you. We will go over the engagement level for team development, which is um, related to what type of support and assistance you are required to receive throughout this process. We will go over the SIM team responsibilities, who the required SIM team members are. We will show you our updated targeted SIM team rubric, speak about some items to consider while developing your team, and we will provide you some SIM team meeting protocols from our system improvement leads um, partners. So system improvement leads, just if you hear us uh, refer to SIL, S-I-L in this presentation, that's, that's who we're talking about. Um, and we can provide those, we will provide those meeting protocols from them. And finally, we will end with support questions and your consultant map by region so that you have our contact information. Just a quick glimpse at who your consultants are. These are the consultants and staff from CDE FUMTA Unit 2. FUMTA stands for Focused Monitoring, Technical and Technical Assistance. And we are led by Donna Martini. This is CDE FUMTA Unit 3, the consultants and staff there. 
and Fault to Unit 3 is led by their administrator, James Johnson. Here is our timeline for the entire SIM process, all the way beginning in March when we began with our annual determination letter to that date of June 30th when the SIM plan will be due. I'd like to direct your attention to that yellowish box labeled April and May with the red arrow that says you are here. We have already completed sending out the annual determination letter and we had our orientation training. And right now you are currently attending the SIM team development training. There are many trainings that we are offering throughout the months of April and May for SIM step one. So please take a look at the next training after this one, which is titled Data Drill Down. We do have the registration link posted on the CDE targeted monitoring websites for levels one and two and three. But if you need that registration link, please don't hesitate to let us know in the Q&A so we can provide that for you. We would like all participants, all LEAs to attend the data drill down on April 18th. And I'd like to direct your attention to one more important date before we move on. That light green box um, in June, that is when all step one activities will be due. So we're currently in step one, we're doing the trainings for step one, and step one will culminate by that June 30th due date. I'd like to hand it over to Tammy McMillan at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Um, so we have linked both level websites here so that you can easily access them. There's the targeted monitoring one and two webpage and the targeted monitoring three webpage. And that's where you're gonna find those registration links that um, Jackie talked about just a moment ago. You'll also be able to find a variety of resources on the targeted monitoring Padlet that's also linked here under that number two. Um, actually, I would bookmark that page as there's gonna be a lot of resources for your reference throughout the SIM process. And uh, the SIM team rubric, which is included in this presentation. So let's talk about engagement levels and how each entity in this process will be involved. So targeted levels one and two, you're really gonna be working closely with your SELPA. Um, and you're gonna be working independently to develop that SIM team. Now I say you're gonna be working independently, but honestly, SELPA is gonna be part of that SIM team to help you um, develop the plan, progress and monitor and implement the plan. Um, and and they're going to be your support system. We're always here for you. Don't think like CDs like, oh, hands off. No, not at all. We're always here for you. You can always reach out to your consultant. Um, but really, SELPA is that lead for your support. Targeted level three, your um, engagement level is required assisted. So what does that mean? Are we going to be all in your business? Not necessarily. What required assisted means is we're providing you the training, we're providing you the resources, we're here for you. But again, you really need to incorporate SELPA into that process because they're, again, going to be those ones that are going to help you um, with your monitoring and implementation process. So required independent uh, CDs only there if you need us. We're here. You're more than welcome to all the trainings that we do. Targeted level three. The trainings are more required for you, and um, we're also here should you need us. So let's talk about what are the responsibilities of the SIM team. Ideally, you're going to want your SIM team in place by that data drill down training on Tuesday, April 18th that Jackie talked about. Having your whole team at this training might be beneficial so that you have the same information and can start as soon as possible on that data drill down. Some questions came up during the orientation asking if you needed to, to create a new team or could you use an existing team that you already had? Of course you can use an existing team. This team doesn't have to be newly formed. So if you, for example, have a differentiated assistance team, as long as it meets the requirements of who needs to be on the SIM team, Please use that team. Um, if uh, so, the team. What so? What's the team going to be responsible for? 
your team needs to understand the elements and the areas that were not met and the factors that resulted in your determination, in your LEA's determination. And then what are they going to do? Collectively, as a group, you're going to discuss the data, analyze the data, determine the cause, the root causes of the, of the problem areas, and then all of you are going to contribute to the development and implementation of the SIM plan. So this is where there's been a slight change from um, the last session is the SIM team members. So the SIM team must include, you need to have an LEA, general education administrator. You need to have an LEA special education administrator. More than likely, this is your special ed director. You need to include a site level administrator, general education teacher, special education teacher. Now, why am I including site level administrators and teachers on this panel? Because they're the ones that are actually gonna be implementing these, um, the program that you develop, the plan you develop. And so it's great to get their input. It's really ne a necessity. And then your SELPA representative. Again, that SELPA representative is important because they're gonna be helping you um, implement and monitor the plan during the next two years. So you really want to have their input. And of course, if you can think of somebody else that you feel is important to this team, feel free to add them. There's no um, maximum number of people you can have on the team. You do need to be careful though and not get too many people involved so that it can still be an effective team. So we did make a few changes to the rubric and here's the, the, the rubric as it stands now. Um, just a couple notes. You need to have a leader who's kind of facilitating the whole group. Um, so you need to have that. And then you also need to make sure that each one of those um, members, the, each one of those categories from the last slide is included. So, um, so you need to make sure that you have that SELPA representative, the gen ed and special ed LEA administrators, the site level administrators, and the general and special education teachers. Of course, once again, you can always add more, but you really need to look to make sure that those are covered. Now, let me just take a quick minute here to talk about smalls. Um, if you're a smaller LEA, you may, your SELPA representing your LEA special education teacher might also be um, a site level administrator, let's say. If that's your case and you're not able to, to meet all those requirements, you need to reach out to your CDE consultant as soon as you can and have a, and, you know, just chat about that to see what we can come up with. And now I'll pass it over to um, DeAndrea Chapman, who's going to discuss you. items to consider. Thank you, Tammy. It may be appropriate for a team member to hold dual roles. Small LEAs may have SIM team members that hold multiple roles due to limited staff. For example, the special ed director may be the SIM team leader. The SIM team leader's responsibilities may include scheduling and facilitating regular meetings and or trainings throughout the SIM development and SIM plan implementation, serve as the point of contact for the SIM team SELPA representative, the SIM team members, the LEA's cabinet, and the LEA superintendent as needed. Please keep a record of all documentation relating to the SIM plan process. Seek technical assistance as needed from the LEA's CE, CDE consultant. Consider the involvement of additional team members whose expertise or knowledge would benefit the SIM process. The SIM team meeting protocols. System improvement leads that SIL provides the following optional protocols. These protocols are optional and they are available on the targeted monitoring padlet. 
These resources may be helpful when meeting together. We have the PASIO protocol, the norm forming protocol, four corners protocol, the data observation protocol, and the affinity protocol. These protocols are designed to guide your team when you are seeking to synthesize, define, and summarize elements of your investigation. And for support, targeted level one and two, the SELPA may support the SIM team development process if requested by the LEA. And targeted level three, the SELPA or the CDE are available to support the SIM team development process. The CDE will assess the SIM team using the SIM team rubric. Questions. Please remember to provide your questions using the Q&A button. And at this time, I'm turning it over to Donna DiMartini. While we wait for you to enter your questions, please review the FUMPTA consultant map and contact information by region. Okay, I'm going to go ahead with the question that I haven't answered yet or that um, Jackie hasn't answered yet. Can one individual satisfy two team member roles like a special ed teacher and a special ed administrator, site level administrator, general ed administrator, um, or is the dual role element only, only for roles there that are mandatory individuals on the team? So we discourage um, having people take two roles. However, there's always individual situations within, a, within an LEA. So we leave it up, the final is up to the LEA. However, work with your consultant and establish um, what your concerns might be. And we will, and we will um, that's how you will solve that is by working individually uh, with your consultant. I found uh, all of the protocols except for the affinity. Is that is that connected to any other link? Jackie, you want to go with that one? Of course. So if you look at the Padlet, the affinity protocol is located in the column labeled step two prioritization required for targeted level three. So these, uh, these protocols have been placed in different columns along the Padlet where we think it would be most helpful. However, I have also found that these protocols can be used um, at almost any time during the SIM process. So don't feel like you're limited to only using it during those particular times. They are optional protocols. They are for you to use because you know your team best. And so they're just there as supports for you. But yeah, that affinity protocol is in just one more time in the step two prioritization column. Um, second down, that's where I found it. Thank you, Jackie. Do we need a parent on this on the team? And if so, can a parent play dual roles? We are not we are not at this time recommending a parent be on the team. It's up to you. if you would choose to have one. That would be up to you. And for the dual role, that would also be up to you. The dis the LEA. Okay, perhaps there should be a column with the protocols all in that section as well. Do you want to answer that, Jackie? I think that's a great idea. I mean, definitely we can look at that um, and, and look at the organization of the Padlet if that's most helpful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Yeah. Okay, uh, hold on. I'm just going to answer that quickly. Um, I see that five required members, but I see six must have people in the sim in the C in the sim team, in my understanding. So we're suggesting those people. Um, we hope that you can have those people, but we understand if you know the number is up to you. If you, if someone can't do, you know, it's up to you. And and I would work again, work with your consultant to discuss what your issues are and why if those people can't represent, can't be rep representing your um, each area. 
Okay. Does anybody want to add anything to what I just said? Any of the panel? Okay. Um, it would be a great idea to communicate with FUMTA consultant through telephone. Unfortunately, the email process seems to be, might we supply phone numbers? We do have phone, we do have phone num numbers now through Teams. So if you need your the phone number, we could probably should add them. We could add them to this, but also you can contact your consultant to get their number and they can they can communicate with you by phone. I will post the website right now that has our right. phone numbers. Thank you. Donna, while she's doing that, I just want to, um, there was a piece that was talked about on Tuesday that we didn't address. Uh, I don't think I addressed very well. And so I just want to address it okay. now. Sure. And that's the documentation of the SIM plan. I just want to reiterate that the, the SIM team leader, whoever you choose to be your leader, needs to keep the documentation that is being used throughout this process. It's not something you're going to turn into CDE immediately, but it might be asked for later. And so you're wanting to either keep like it on a on a Google Drive or in a binder, whichever works for you, but you are going to want to keep that documentation together for, for a couple of variety, a couple of reasons. One is if somebody has to take an extended leave and somebody has to pick up and continue with the SIM team, they need to be able to see your thought process and where you're at. And number two is, you know, this process is, is a multi-year process and, and we all know people you know, come and go. And so again, we need all that documentation in one piece, in one place, so that people can pick up and take over should there be a change in administration. So I just, I don't think that I covered that very well. And so I just wanted to reiterate that piece again, keeping documentation of all these different steps, however is best for you, that you really need to make sure that that's being done by that SIM team leader. Very good. Thanks. Okay. I'm looking for my place here. Do we need a parent? Sorry, one second. Is there, okay, here we go. Is there, um, is there a report or plan format that we need to follow for the June 30th deadline? April and May will go very quickly and we need the big picture to accurately set up the meetings with the whole team. Uh, Tammy, you want to answer that? So um, you will be inputting the summarizing of all these different steps into Stepwell. It's a, it's a computer program that we'll be using. It's not um, ready to um, be um, shared with the LEAs yet. Um, if, you did, if you were in the SIM process last year, it's very similar. But in regards to um, this, if you're new to it, it's not quite ready. And so um, the best thing to do is, again, keep all that documentation. What a lot of our LEAs last year did was kind of type up summaries of what they've done in each of these steps, and then they copy and pasted it into Stepwell. Stepwell does not give you a form. It doesn't give you that. It's just a text box where you're going to be summarizing your findings, your actions, your strategies, your activities, those kinds of things, um, you'll just be summarizing those in a box and step well. Just, Tammy, I'm going to add on to that. Yeah. Just to clarify, that is only for targeted level three. If Thank you, are, you, Jackie. No problem. If you are a targeted level one and two at LEA, and you're probably asking right now, what do I need to keep? What am I going to do? What do I submit to SELPA? You are going to do these activities, keep the documentation from these activities. SELPA is involved in your SIM team. And so they should be doing these activities alongside you or with or supporting you. And you will just be keeping them informed. And that is up to SELPA and as to what they would like to see. And they should be checking in on this process. Donna, we do have a SELPA training coming up. That is correct, right? And yes. So the um, a SELPA training will, and unfortunately, well, there will be a SELPA training at the SELPA meeting on May 5th. Okay, yeah, and, and we communicated the need for the SELPAs to get the, the training. Um, our plan with our unit was to do it um, before we did anything else, but because of the changes and adjustments, um, 
we were asked to, to hold off on it. So now we're going to do it on May 5th. So I'm glad. We're very happy that the SUPAs have been asking for that. That's helped us get it scheduled. Okay. Uh, report format. It would be best to develop teams during the start of the school year in August as we will likely experience staff changes. Yes. Um, when will step well be available? We hope it will be available very soon. We're hoping. It's, uh, have you heard it? I haven't heard anything more about it. It's still being developed. So we'll let you know as soon as, it, as, soon as we have it where you can get in, we're going to let you know. Okay. And um, anybody else have a comment on that? Okay. This is an all new, this is all new to us as level one. We do not need to use Stepwell. Can you share the steps with us? Do you want to quickly go through the steps with for step one? I can do yeah. that. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So just to clarify, if you are a level one or level two LEA, you do need to use Stepwell for one of the activities. That will be the student record review, policy procedure review, and Stepwell. If you are a level three LEA, you will be using step well for all of the step one activities, which include the team creation, the data drill down, parent input if you are a targeted level three, and parent input is required for targeted level one and two LEAs who, are, who have unmet indicator eight, and you will also, all LEAs are required to do, like I said, that student record review, policy procedure review, and step well. For those LEAs, thank you, Tammy. For those LEAs identified as disproportionate, you will also have a student record review and policy procedure review um, in our disproportionality review system. And finally, there will be that consolidation in that consolidation process where you are identifying your strengths and weaknesses and what you will move forward with as we go into root cause analysis. So just one more time to kind of clarify, LEAs, uh, LEA levels one and two, you are required to do these activities. The only ones that may be optional for your, or that, yeah, parent input may not be required. That depends on if you're out in element eight, disproportionality review. That depends if your district was identified as disproportionate or not but the other activities in that yellow box are required. You do not have to submit those activities in step well, except for the student record review and policy procedure review. And I realize this is a lot of information. It's, it's um, kind of teasing it out. And that is why we do have different monitoring levels because there are differences in those. Targeted level three, you will be doing all of those um, activities that are listed in that yellow box, and you will be submitting summaries for all of those activities in Stepwell. Jackie, just to piggyback on what you just said, you will be completing all the activities in the yellow box with the red arrow, except for disproportionality. You'll only be completing the disproportionality review if you were identified as disproportionate. And that disproportionality review is not in step well. Let me clarify that. That is in a separate system known as SECMIS, which is our special education um, oh my gosh, monitoring, system. monitoring system. There we go. <laughs> uh, is it possible to get the link for SELPA training on May 5th? That, that will be taking place at the SELPA meeting and they will be, um, I, I'm not sure how they will handle it. You'll need, you'll need to check the SELPA. Um, Real quick, I saw somebody raise their hand. I just want to remind everybody we're not able to unmute you. So if you have a comment or question, please make sure you put it in the chat in the Q and A. We will be undergoing staff changes, so those who are on the team now will not be next year. Um, uh, would someone like to make a comment on that, Tammy, DeAndrea, Jackie? Sure, we understand that completely. Um, we all come from um, LEAs, and so we totally understand that there's staff changes um, quite often. And so that's why it's so important to keep that documentation. So as staff changes 
happen, somebody can come into the team and kind of be filled in with what's happened previously. Um, the timeline's not ideal. I'm going to be honest with you. The timeline's not ideal, but it's the timeline we have, and so we have to work within it. The May 5th training is only for SELPA. Yes, it's at the SELPA, and it's it's for the SELPA um, team. That's it. Um, gee, seems we will need to hire more people to do the monitoring. Um, so if you're feeling that way, please reach out to your consultant and talk to them. This um, The monitoring is, is not to be super cumbersome. It's just to help you plan and develop a plan to really reach those students who are falling between behind, you know, between the cracks. So if you're feeling like you're going to need to hire new staff just to get the SIM plan done, please reach out to your consultant and we'll work with you to figure out how we can maneuver um, this, the staff you have to help out to develop the SIM plan. And our goal in developing the SIM plan is to help you with um, work that you need to do. It's not to add, it's to help you with an, with an organizational plan to zero in on one area that you need to work on. Not every area, but one area is to make sure that you are um, able to um, make small changes. We know that it takes a, a lot of small changes to make progress. And so uh, please know that we're here to help you. Um, is, is this written somewhere about Stubwell, Jackie? I'm not sure what that question is referring to, um, but I think I'm they're asking about the steps to step well. I think that they will get me receiving that. You will be receiving that as soon as step well is ready to be rolled out. You'll be receiving a training on step yeah. well. And so you'll be getting the documentation you need about that as soon as it's ready to go. So Stepwell is not part of CDE, and, and so you have to understand that we are working with an outside person and, the, and trying to get things as perfect as we can get to, um, to serve you well, and that's what the delay is. Um, okay, there's some just comments here. I'm not going to... Somebody asked what an EPC is. Were your were educational program consultants? Yes. Uh, were your consultants for your region to help um, support you? And it was, I'm the person who wrote this in. I'm very sorry that I did that. I was trying to hurry to get it in. But yes, educational program consultant. Okay. So let me explain, um, Autumn, that the that the it's going to be a regular SELPA meeting and we're scheduling a time to train within your regular SELPA meeting on May 5th. It's already a scheduled uh, SELPA meeting. Um, I see just, a question. One question that I want to make sure that we address is somebody asked, we were level two last year yeah. and I completed all of the yellow activities and we're level three this year. Do we have to repeat these activities again? You really, if you were a level two last year and developed a SIM plan, reach out to your CDE consultant and, and discuss this with them. The, the issue is this, is it's different data, right? And so you need to see if your SIM plan last year still reflects the targets that you're working on this year. So reach, if you were a level two last year, before you go through all this process again, reach out to your consultant review your previous plan with your consultant and see if it's something you can keep adjusting, revising, monitoring and implementing, or if the data is so different that you need to develop a new plan. I hope that helps you out. Okay, then we have, do we have to notify anyone if we have a staff change on the SIM team? Um, Jackie? If you are a level one or two LEA, I would say obviously keep your keep yourself informed, um, which I'm sure they will be as they're part of the team. And if you have a staff change on the SIM team, um, 
for targeted level three LEAs, I would just let your consultant know just so they can keep ahead of who those contacts are um, as there is a lot of turnover. And so it is good to be informed, but there's not, it's just an email that you can send. Let us know. Okay. And, and, and also when you let, help have the, inform the consultant, they can work like say it's the special ed director that changes, they, they can really be a lot of support to the, to that, to that person who is mm -hmm. leading that group. Okay, can you clarify what you meant by one area? So, um, Jackie, you want to go? I mean, uh, Tammy, you want to go ahead and answer that? What I meant with by one area? Sure. So, when you got your data, some of you may have been out in multiple elements or areas. We're not asking you to address each one of those. You're going to pick one or two to really focus on, and, and let me explain why, right? We're all special ed people and I was a special ed teacher. And if I had a student come in that had 12 different goals, I wasn't gonna be able to make a ton of progress on 12 different goals. Same with you, if you had eight different areas you're targeting, you're not gonna make the progress you need to make on all eight of those. So we're saying let's really focus on one or two of those areas, make some great progress in the next couple of years on those one or two areas that you feel are like really hindering your students, focus on those one or two areas and make some, some great changes, make some great progress and then see where we are and then refocus again. Um, does anybody else wanna piggyback on that? That's just kind of my no, philosophy. That's, that's, that's good. Does a SIM team document need to be submitted by April 18th? There is no SIM team document that needs to be submitted. Targeted level three LEAs will do a SIM team summary, which will be due June 30th. So you're creating your SIM team now, but that but reporting on who your SIM team is and who, who's holding which role for targeted level threes, that won't be due until June 30th and step well. Targeted levels one and two, um, there's no official SIM team document. You just need to share the information with SELPA in your preferred format. Okay. Um, will there be a template for the plan that, ultimate, that is ultimately submitted? Will it be similar to the PIR plans? I'd like to have some idea what the ultimate submission is supposed to look like. Jackie, you want to go ahead with that? So we are currently developing what that is looking like. And so unfortunately, as, as much as I would like to give you a copy of it now, because I understand in education, that's how we work, right? We have a template for it and you work to, um, you know, fill in those areas. My best advice for this question would be to work closely with your consultant so that we can advise you as we move along and as we develop what needs to, what what you need to have in your documentation. Tammy, do you wanna add anything? Um, the only thing I would add is just remember there, whereas in PIR, you had to like describe every little piece. Um, in this process, you're just summarizing. You're just summarizing um, what you did during this step. So like in this piece, right, team development, all you're gonna do is just list who is on your team and what role they're fulfilling. So um, like for myself, so I would say, oh, Tamara McMillan, LEA Special Education Administrator, DeAndrea Chapman, LEA Gen Ed Administrator, D Donna Martini, Site Administrator, Jacqueline Stewart, Gen Ed Teacher. That's all that's gonna be for this piece is the names of the people and which role they're fulfilling. And the other steps such as data drill down, and um, parent input, those kinds of things. There'll be other trainings to help you. But again, all you're doing is summarizing what you found out during those. So like drill down, data drill down, you're gonna summarize what your team found out during your data drill down. And you're just gonna summarize those activities. That's all right yeah, now. Yeah. Anything to add yeah. on that? No, I think that was perfect. That was a perfect summation. Yes, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. As of right now, I will say that we are SIM Step 3, which is our SIM plan due November 30th, will have LEAs identifying activities and strategies that mm -hmm. they will be implementing. 
and you will have to provide um, dates of implementation. And so if you are working, you know, and that's, I realize that you guys were, we're long-term planners. We want to have those pieces in place, but just to give you a big picture, that is what we're working towards. Can we access the questions you were answering? They aren't showing up in Q&A. We held off on publishing the Q&A from last time. We will be publishing this. Uh, it will be um, up on the website and the um, in the Padlet. Um, as soon as this, probably very shortly after this is over, we will go through these questions and those and have them on, on the, the website. We put them on both, don't we, Tammy? The website and the... No, they're just on the Padlet. Oh, I'm sorry. They're just on the Padlet. So you've got the link to the Padlet. Okay, let me look down here. One or two, which one? Okay, one or two. What, what you, you get to decide. It, it really depends on your data. You, yeah. You, you and your team need to look at that data and decide, do we need to focus on one, is one enough, or are there two big areas that I really feel would be impactful for, for our students, for our clientele? So again, we're not telling you what to do. You're telling yourself through that data drill down and that investigation piece what you really feel is needed for your school to improve to meet these state targets. And it really, it, it, I would say it extends into the root cause analysis as well, mm -hmm. because if your data drilled down, you know, from your data that you gather and that you analyze, if that leads you to uh, a root cause for similar areas, then you are addressing more than one, obviously. Uh, where can we find the email address for our consultant? I'm going to put it back up again, just for those who didn't. I was sharing that timeline for people. Let me share again the map for anybody who might need it. Will there be reminders for each different level of what specifically is due when, as well as what exactly needs to be submitted and where it needs to be submitted? There are a lot of pieces, and we don't want to miss anything. Uh, Jackie, you want to go ahead with that one? Yes, I'm going to put us on the line right here because in past instances, consultants will email their um, SELPAs and they will let the SELPAs know when, you know, give them those reminders of when things are due and so that SELPAs can pass that information to LEAs. We are a charter LEA with authorizing districts in two counties. My question is, if the assignment of our consultant is based on the charter, self, the, the charter self location, that is correct. The location of our authorizing districts um, associated with the data, uh-oh, it moved. I'm sorry. Sorry. So, would somebody like to explain the, how they are on the SELPA charter, for example, and then, or us at, this, mm -hmm. at another district? It's the sure. Yeah, it's the Sure. So just to kind of go over that. So your um, regional consultant is based on your SELPA and, and the location of your SELPA. So um, a lot of charters are with El Dorado County Charter. That is in Region 3. So if you're part of that, you're in Region 3. If you are part of a charter authorized by a local um, LEA, right? So where I'm located in Woodland, we have a charter that's authorized by our district, Woodland Joint Unified School District. That would put them in Woodland, you know, Yolo County, SELPA. So again, it's all about where your authorized um, charter SELPA location is. Does that answer that question? Don't that? Yes, that's good. And and also we want you to know that. Um, we have a consultant that is dedicated to the charters in um, Region 3. One and, person. Yeah, the El Dorado County Charter, SELPA, you have one consultant. Um, for disproportionality, is there a way to input the updated numbers into a tool to calculate current risk ratio? That would be relevant to the data drill down activity. So I do not know of a tool to do that. Um, the, the, I, I understand what you're saying. It would be relevant to the data drawdown activity. 
However, I do not know of a tool that um, would do that for you. But I'm going to put in, uh, if you want to send me an email, uh, mine is Tamara T. McMillan at cde.ca.gov. I'll put my email address in there for you. Um, send me this question and I'll do some research to see if I can find it for you because I understand what you're saying. So um, I'll, I'll try my best to see if I can find something, but I don't know of anything right at this moment. The next question, does disproportionality count as one of the areas to focus on or is that in addition to the, to the one? So disproportionality, you're not really focusing on necessarily an area. Um, disproportionality, well, you are, but you're not. So disproportionality, the review that goes into disproportionality is a policy procedure and practices re f review and a student file review. If you want to write that into your SIM plan, let's say I was over in um, Hispanic, I ED over identification. If I if you want to write that into your SIM plan, that's great practice so that you can um, get out of that disproportionality review. But the SIM, um, if and especially if you don't have any other areas, right? If you were um, met the state target in all the other areas, then yeah, you're that could be one of the areas that you focus on. You again, you just need to look at your data because each of these are individualized, right? So you just really, again, need to look at your data and determine what you really want to focus on. So I would say check in with your CDE consultant again. We are at target level, we are at target level three for preschool. We do not operate any preschools, but work with our county office who, su who support the early childhood education programs. We do not have a site level administrator for preschool programs. Who do we recommend? Who do you recommend for the site level administrator under these circumstances? I, I think you should need that. I would work further with your consultant and discuss the issues and, um, and work together to, to see if there's a person that we, we could would help you recommend. We are having difficulty pulling which IEPs were considered late, possibly because they are not late anymore. So it may be, I'm going to let somebody else answer this too, but it may be that another one, yeah, that there was another, an IEP held after that was considered late. So um, you'll have to look into that. And, uh, does anyone not want to add to that? I just want to say that data is constantly moving, right? Yeah. Uh, IEPs are constantly being held. That was just a snapshot in time and where you were at at that time. I'm just going to reiterate what um, Ms. Duncan Besserell said in the orientation is that data lives within your system. And so your system is the most current up to date information. And then that as long as you keep looking and making sure that you're up to date on your IEPs when that next pool comes at end of year, then it will show the improvement. So Heather um, has provided us with the link and we'll put this in our, in our Q and A. Um, thank you, Heather, um, for the uh, data drill down uh, center tool. And she says they need an account and it's, in parentheses, free to ensure data security. So it has to be secure. But um, we'll be sending you that link. Thank you very much, Heather. And I think that's what Syl's going to go over on the 18th also. So um, I, I believe with the data drill down center tool, that's what they're going to be going over on the 18th, just to give you more information on there. If you don't want to go in blind, um, they'll be doing that next week from 9 to 12 is the scheduled time. And then some uh, Autumn puts in here, for, for later meetings, they could check 16.8 CalPAS report from census day to see which ones are were late. Very good, that's very good. Thank you, Autumn, for that detail. Mm -hmm. So that, that will tell you when we saw them as being late and then you'll know what, we, what the corrective action is, is, the, is showing that it was done provided on time. 
Okay, are there any other questions? I, are we done? Did I skip any ladies that you saw? I just want to say, um, Laura, Lara said the consultant map by region that we included in today's slides don't match the information shown um, on the CDE website uh, from the consultant assignments. This is the accurate one. There was a few changes made. Um, yeah, and that's being updated. But we, like we said, we have to go through a process when we update on the on the website. So this is the most accurate one. This is the most up to date, as of yesterday, up to date map we can give you. And we wanted to share the most up to date information with you. And it's from to two who made changes, and so that's why. But but Tammy, we're putting it up very soon, aren't we? I'm working on it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I've, I've got her running. <laughs> okay. Um, is that it? Is there something below that question? Hold on. Oh, yeah. Oh, Heather added another resource. Great. Um, thank you, Heather. Yeah. We'll, put that, in. we'll put that in the, in the question Q&A. Um, what was the data pull date? What, what day did we pull the data? It was, does anybody remember? The date of this last call? No. Uh, for the IEPs, I do not know. Me neither. I can't remember. There's right. a system, but I should know. Does the <laughs> system improvement SIL um, have the data calculation tool to calculate risk ratios from previous years? I don't think we can answer that. Can somebody, Jackie or Tammy or DeAndrea, can you answer that? I am we not aware of it's it. Yeah, still. We're new to it. We're new to it because we're targeted. So um, we haven't worked with SIL before, but we'll learn. Carol, we'll learn right along with you on April 18th from 9 to 12. <laughs> okay. Heather DeFeedy said that the IEP poll was February 10th. Thank you, okay. Heather and Kara. I appreciate that information. <laughs> and then she gave us a um, East County, uh, the CD, the S San Diego County Office of it. If you like us to assist with your compliance data, that's great. Thank you. Okay, without knowing data pull date, how would I know which date to enter the in into CalPads if the for the late IEP on data pull date? Does anybody want to answer that? I'm kind of. Oh, Heather did for us. It's February 10th. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's the one. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Getting down here. Oh, the seabeds. Oh, that's when we do it. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then if you, if we are disproportionate and are also, our area was late IEPs, then our plan should focus on which area or both. Or should it focus on the IEP, late IEP situation? Hi, Santa. Have to do, no, oh, go ahead. Late Tammy. IEPs you're going to just do on your own. It's not part of your SIM plan. You're just focusing on getting those up to date as soon as you can. It's not part of the SIM plan. What happened is that information was, was included in the letters for your information only so that you could address that. In regards to the SIM plan, the SIM plan is going to address your disproportionality area or your areas on your data sheet target that you were, did not meet the state targets in. The, in. the indicators are, we call elements on that, on that, on that data sheet. On those student data sheets. Yeah. Okay. So um, Heather's saying email us at, okay, at, uh, and then she, okay, we got that. Is ED and D still providing support? No, they are no longer providing support. Good question. We should have mentioned that. Okay. All right. With that, we say thank you very much. Um, as you know, your consultants are available to you. And we will be seeing you April 18th at the SIL training. I, I think there'll be a lot of interest in that also. I think we'll see a lot of you there. Um, and then uh, we'll be moving forward quickly with other trainings. What is our next training after April 18th? Do, don't we have one? April 25th. 
is parent input. Okay. All right. Again, thank you so much for your time. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.